everybody, I'm Allie and this is the YNR Chat Vlog for Sunday, March 22nd. We had a short week this week. There were only three shows. Kind of annoying. Kind of annoying to be preempted for some sporting activities, which I do not care about uh, at all. I hate preemptions, but what can we do? Short week, so I'll make it a short vlog. Uh, just a couple of things to say. Number one being, I love Unstable Sharon. Of all of the years that I've known Sharon, I think this is my favorite way to see her. It's just so bizarre and fun, and it's just so many things all wrapped up into one. Uh, this week, Phyllis confronted Sharon about her hot and sexy fling with Billy, uh, and Sharon almost had a complete and total nervous breakdown in Phyllis's house, begging Phyllis not to tell Jack what she had done, and Phyllis ultimately deciding not to say anything yet. Uh, I'm sure that Phyllis will keep that card up her sleeve and play it whenever she needs to. Very difficult uh, on Sharon. Very, very difficult. Uh, she stumbled her way out of out of the Phyllis's house, um, goes back to her room and is so distraught, Jack shows up and she kind of throws herself into his arms. He, Jack loves Sharon and he offers for her to come back and live with him at the house and she is just so weak at this point that she just throws herself into his arms asking him to just make sure that he keeps her safe. Very, very indicative of what her state of mind is. I'm so concerned about Jack getting involved with Sharon, with Sharon again when she clearly does not love him the way that he loves her. But she's going to go uh, pack her bags and move into the Abbott Mansion. Little does she know that Chloe and Billy are also moving in uh, to the pool house. So there's going to be a fun little foursome there. As soon as I realized that that's how the storyline was developing, I was like, yes, because I'm totally looking forward to seeing like some, maybe some breakfasts or din dinners at, around the, the, the Abbott dining room table where Billy and Sharon are kind of looking at each other and stealing sexy glances. And who knows, maybe even sneaking out of their rooms at night to go make out in a broom closet or whatever. Uh, but I just really, really like that that's where they headed with the storyline. I'm definitely looking forward to see how that pans out. And I also wanted to ask you guys, um, Billy and Sharon, is it just sex or is it possible that it might develop into something more? I want to know what your thoughts are. What would you, what are you guys thinking about the Billy Sharon hookup? Is it hot? Do you want to see it maybe develop into something else? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure that I want it necessarily to be, necessarily to be a romantic relationship, but I just like how illicit it is and how unexpected it was. Um, so I'm definitely down with it. And here's another question, uh, that maybe you haven't thought of. What about if Sharon and Billy are going to be kind of fooling around, what about Chloe and Jack? What do you think? Is that, I'm sure your first instinct is going to be like, no, but wouldn't it be kind of interesting possibly? I mean, I could definitely see Jack with someone a little bit younger. They're both clearly on the same page about taking care of this baby. Uh, and it seems like Jack is more interested in making that relationship work out with Chloe than Billy is. So, hey, why not put Jack in there? There could be a little bit of hanky pinky. I, I, I would be interested. I like the surprise. I like that surprise element with couples. So I wouldn't be completely turned off to see that uh, potentially. But let me know your thoughts. I'm really curious to know. So Kane filed for full custody of the baby. And of course, Jill is backing her favorite son um, in having Delia taken away from her uh, real parents. Um, okay, Kane needs to back off, in my opinion. Um, Chloe and Billy aren't perfect parents, but who who are? Who are perfect parents? I mean, they they don't abuse the child. They they don't neglect the child. They don't ignore her. They're not drug addicts. Billy and Chloe, not perfect people by any stretch of the imagination. What Chloe did to trick Kane, not okay. But I mean, the truth of the matter is, Kane isn't the father. Chloe and Billy are the parents, and I think, and maybe this is just like a social, you know, uh, maybe this is just kind of what you know, my social values are putting it onto the show, but I just feel like 
let the child be with the parents. Um, Cain continuing, to, like, even when Cain call, you know, says this is daddy to the baby, it's, it feels awkward, it feels not right, and I think that Lily is starting to see that. I just have gathered that from the couple of times that the camera has showed her while Cain is with the baby that maybe she knows that he's setting himself up for disappointment. He is not gonna win this court case. What, what proof does he have to show that that uh, that they should that Billy and Chloe should not be the parents. So I think maybe Lily is starting to sense that uh, Kane is going to be disappointed with the outcome of all of this. And hopefully, I hope that she will be able to talk some sense into him and get him to give up this idea of full custody soon. Catherine Chancellor, the second DNA test didn't match. I kind of assumed that it would. I was just assuming that the first test was tampered with and that as soon as we got the results of the second test, everything would be laid to rest. Uh, but that's not what happened. The second test showed up uh, negative as well and then it hit me, duh, Jill and Catherine aren't really mother and daughter. It's the same situation as it was with the uh, uh, with the Kane and Billy and Chloe paternity DNA test. Uh, the uh, the Jill and Catherine just actually must not be related because we all know this is Catherine. Uh, for heaven's sake, she acts like Catherine. She looks like Catherine. It's if it it's Catherine. So um so Jill and Catherine not related. After all of these years, after all of the years of them hating each other, then all of a sudden, wow, they're actually mother and daughter, and now they're not? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just my interpretation of it, but uh, I am very curious to see how it will pan out. Unfortunately, now that Catherine has realized that the DNA test came back negative, she took the little bit of money that Amber gave her, and she split town. Yeah, I just don't see any resolution to this storyline coming anytime soon. I think it's going to be a while yet before we have the real Catherine Chancer back in her life and claiming her identity. Now, after giving Catherine a little bit of money to survive, Amber goes off to find Kevin, who is still off robbing banks and doing very, very naughty things. Um, Clint, so excited that Kevin brought back all of this a lot, these large amount of money in a bag, just so like, oh my gosh, this money is so great, I'm gonna buy myself something good. Ah, ah! <laughs> and he dies, he has a heart attack, dies right there on the floor in the hotel. Ain't that a bitch, Clint? Adam just keeps getting more and more pathetic and sad. Now, not only is he blind, but he got beaten up, so he's all bloody, and he's just in a bad state of things. I still love him. I have a little soft spot for Adam for some reason. Out of nowhere it came, and I hope that he gets his life back together soon. Now he's out of jail. He, he's uh, on house arrest at the ranch. By the way, the fact that one man... Victor has that much influence on the legal system makes me scared and concerned that all Victor has to do is snap his fingers and uh, and Adam is out of jail. That's great. <laughs> but uh, Adam is out. Uh, I'm surprised to see how tolerant that Ashley has been of Adam and welcoming, welcoming him into the home and just being really nice and, and understanding and helping him get around, especially since she has this difficult pregnancy ahead of her. I'm kind of surprised to see how warm she's being to Adam. We'll just have to see if uh, Adam will be able to behave himself uh, and be a good boy this time around. My instinct says no. Devon nailed Neil. Talk about a role reversal there. Usually it's Neil chastising his children and giving them advice and pushing them into the direction of righteousness. And this time, Devon saw Neil banging Tyra and he totally lets Neil have it. It was like, it was almost too far. When Devon said to Neil, I used to look up to you, I thought, okay. Neil did a bad thing, but it's not that bad. I mean, I can, I guess I can understand if you found one of your parents cheating, that would be terrible, but I just thought, okay, Devon, I understand that you're mad, but let's not act like Neil is some, you know, total scumbag. He still, you know, has some redeeming qualities as a person. Uh, but, but anyway, it was bad, but not that bad. 
Okay, so that's it uh, for me for now. Short week of shows, short vlog, I suppose. So, um, hope you guys are enjoying the show, enjoying the vlogs. Also, if you belong to any uh, YNR message boards or forums or chat rooms or whatever, please feel free to pass along the link to this vlog to anybody who you think might enjoy it. I would love to get a few more subscribers, a few more people participating. And as always, thanks to you guys who are still participating. Please do feel free to leave me text comments, make a video response, anything you'd like to do. I always enjoy hearing from you. Thank you so much. And uh, if you want to check out my website, uh, you can go to it at www.buttonhead.org. Uh, otherwise, I will be back here next Sunday, same time, same place. So I will see you then. Bye.